Moshe and Tomea, he's about, well, what's that, about three feet? What did you say? There's yeah. a three feet. Give me that nice patent thread. But how do I create that same effect from less than half the distance? Here, here. Left, or right. Well, the same impact dynamics are present, but I have to economize the movement. Yeah? So for me, uh, this is one of my favorite things I used to do on the floor. So quite often I'd use a tactile fence. Do you understand the tactile? Mm -hmm. The reason I used tactile fence was because proxemics and noise of the environment would dictate that it couldn't necessarily correspond with me correctly from here. Because he can't fucking hear me. Do you understand that? So I'd have to be almost in his ear hole like that. And because I'm close to him, I'll be very gentle, but I'll be tactile. I have to work from here so I can monitor him. If I feel that he's about to become hostile, he's tense, maybe he had a bottle in his hand, he feels sh shifting weight. Do you understand what I said about three threat cues before? Yeah. So let's say this guy I should have left ages ago because I've asked him nicely to finish his drink. Then I've had to tell him he's ignored me, and now it's the third time around and he's becoming hostile because I went to me. You picture that in your head? Yeah. yeah right. So from here, if he had a bottle in his hand, excuse me, I'll take a drink, and suddenly he's shifted weight, and he's got a bottle in here, what would that tell you in your head? He's going to fucking hit me, wouldn't he? Because this, I put it to you, an definitive shift in weight is a pre threat cue. So, quite often, to monitor if there was a pre threat cue, particularly if I'm close and visual perspective is not available because I'm too close, I'd feel his energy. And I've knocked people out from touching here to hitting them here. The way that I'll do it, push off this back foot and drop my weight laterally, yes? And I'll throw it literally from his shoulder to his head. But if you know anything about that, some of the Filipino stuff, when yeah. they cut, they'll pass and cut through, it's almost like a power assist in it. I would do that, I would check from here, pull him in, and then drop the weight from here, literally just from his shoulder to his ear, I'll knock him out. What allows me to do that, is this economy of motion is maximized by I still use a large movement with my feet to transfer weight. So from here, I'll drop weight, this way, from here. This is literally from his shoulder to his ear. I'm getting a great concussive effect. I'm getting lateral drift of the brain, where the head's accelerating quickly, where the brain is in fluid, it's moving on a delay. It's then catching up when the brain's come, the head's come to a stop. Rebounds into the brain casing, the skull casing. Can you picture that? Yeah. So imagine the skull accelerating, and the neck muscles deaccelerate and bring the head to a halt. But because the brain's in fluid, there's a delay. So as soon as the head stops, the brain then goes and crashes into the side of the skull. Depending on the impact of the shot, will depend on how many times it rebounds left and right. And the body's natural way to prevent concussive brain damage, because that's what's occurring, is to induce unconsciousness. Do you understand? If you to understand the physiology, understand the possible effects that your strikes will have, from minimal to maximal, and anything in between. Yes? Yeah. So what I want you to do now, now you need two pads, just get two pads in here. So I want you to do the same skill with the left and right. If I was to work this from the ball, and you stood behind it, you would see if I come off and out to come back in, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. So I don't want to do that, so we go from here. <coughs> this. Yeah. You do the same thing with a pad. So what I'll do now is I put one hand inside the index of this pad here, that width the shoulders, and then from here I'll dump my weight laterally, slack. Is known, particularly in knife work, 
is known as the vital L. Yeah? So I need this target in the side of his neck here, or slap him here, which is relatively low level of force, it'll just drop his blood pressure. Particularly if you do it both hands at the same time. A good friend of mine, Jamie O'Keefe, used to favour this method. If you want it impactive to create a concussive effect, then the jawline is a good option. Particularly if you articulate with the palm, so keeping the hand loose, or just jot the palm here or into it as I do it. Right? Another type of target is the ear, stroke, back of the head, brain stem. Brain stem is the money target. So that's, that's the main computer mainframe. Right? It's best for an elbow or a hammer fist. Yeah? But it can work really well with this as a concussive shot. In terms of hand configuration for a slap, there's three trains of thought. One is, spray the hand and keep it like a spade. Big fucking structure, wide as possible. Large surface area, hitting a large area of target. The Constantine, Peter Constantine, favours when he power slaps the side of the face. Because the side of the face is rich in nerves. And the knockout that's coming from this is just more or less an altered state of consciousness. Because you've got a large striking surface hitting a large target area. And what it creates is uh, sensory overload. It just kind of fucking gnaw and shakes his brain. Just kind of stumbles in. You know like when you see somebody who's getting a standing count in boxing? He's on his feet but there's no one in. You know what I mean? It's an old state of consciousness, right? It's a good effect. And again, a low level of force. So face, neck, is a red mark. Disruption in consciousness, but no real damage. If I hit him on the jawline, there's a good chance I'll shake his brain now. Unlikely to fracture his jaw with this weapon, but so I'll get a good brain check. If I make a dent and I cup the hair, so McCann's camp, Kelly McCann, likes to cup the ear. We call it cup hand blow, so they make a dent. Well, if I blow the eardrum, you know, I'll, I'll damage equilibrium. But I don't think that's necessarily reliable in terms of Passively stopping me. Because the last time I was here, when we were training, somebody that was here is here tomorrow, popped my eardrum with a slap. He was just a little bit overzealous and he popped it. And I realised he popped it, and I blew like that and loads of air come out. Mm. But I didn't realise it at the time and still continued talking, although I felt a little bit deaf for a second. Do you understand? Yeah. But regardless of what colour the fucking cat is, as long as it catches the fucking mouse. So I don't care if you hit the palm heel, the dented hand, or the whole hand. I don't care if you slap the face, the ear, the back of the neck, or the side of the neck. Just hit the cunt. <laughs> Do you understand? <laughs> and hit him with intent and impact. And always think of your first shot as the beginning of a barrage. Do you understand? You've got the time frame it takes from me hitting you to the index before I hit you again. So you've got the time between me hitting you and grabbing you to fall down. There's not much scope before I hit you again. Does that make sense? Well, so the first shot is always the, the, the first of a continuous amount. But just so you know, you, know, you can spray the hand, you can cup the hand, or you can just fucking slap with a loose hand. I quite like the old uh, Chinese method. Jiao Sao from Wing Chun. It's the slapping hand, but I keep the, the hand really loose. <coughs> I get a really good effect if my hand is loose like a whip structure. But experiment for yourself. Basically, all you're doing is putting this hand to the side of his head hard. Got it? Yeah. Let's see. 